What's up guys and gals, and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we've got like a little bit of a special treat, I guess. The Against the Storm developers reached out and asked if I would be interested in showing off the new patch of the game before it goes live. And so as you can see, it's coming out on the 13th, and as at the time that I'm recording this, it's actually the 9th, but you'll probably see it on the 10th, I guess, with how my scheduling goes. But they are adding a new race on into the game, the Fox People. And so the Fox people tend to be very good at working with the various fluids that fall from the sky in this game. But I guess that's not going to make that much sense. I'm kind of walking into this expecting you to have played Against the Storm. Let's reset for a second. What is Against the Storm? Against the Storm is a roguelite city builder. And it's one of the only games, I think, to ever really pull off that premise in a satisfying way, where you are a viceroy for a dystopian society that is ruled over by, like, the Queen of Ash or, like, the Queen of Fire or something like that. Basically, there's a storm that destroys the planet cyclically. So every, like, X amount of time, a storm rolls through and wipes out all of mankind's works. There's one lady the Fire Queen or whatever, that can erect a barrier that will stop the storm from destroying the capital. You're an elected official, or I guess a delegated official, uh, who goes out and in between storms you exploit as much of the land as you possibly can before falling back to the capital to stack up your spoils and then the queen kind of grades you versus all of the other nobles that are doing the same thing. Along the way you're going to have meta progression, you're going to unlock new buildings, you're going to unlock new types, and the game tends to capitalize very well on ideas from games you've seen like Slay the Spire, Faster Than Light, uh, Binding of Isaac. It tends to fold a lot of ideas from those games into a city builder to make it a true roguelite experience and I, I think that's what makes this game really unique. It is currently in early access. If you wanted to take a look at the roadmap right here, this is where they are at with their early access. On the 13th, I think this button right here is going to be X'd in green or whatever uh, because the fifth playable race is the foxes and then they're going to be adding some more stuff around. So the game's still got a little bit of a path to trod before it's done, but if you wanted to check out the early access, you can do that down below in the description. You can also find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream down there just in case you wanted to hang out live. I will try to stream this game on the next stream that I have after. I don't stream on Mondays, but this video is probably going to go live on a Monday. So probably Tuesday maybe? I don't know. Check in on the Discord. The link's down there and I'll ping it when I go live. This is the world map right here. The Smoldering City is where the Queen reigns. I have everything universally unlocked because the developers are super nice and they sent over a quick key so that I wouldn't have to play through the entire game to get to the Fox content. Uh, but you build up that city. When you first start out, your city's going to look different. It's not going to have anything but a tower right here and then you slowly build all these things with meta with metagame upgrades. And the buildings will give you different bonuses that make the game easier on you. And speaking of difficulty, this game has like 25 different difficulties, so if you're into like Ascension levels and Slay the Spire, this game already has that. You can basically play it ad nauseum, just increasing the difficulty of the game over and over. But what are we doing right now? Well, we gotta pick a spot on the map where we want to settle our colony. You can get a preview of that. Every single tile has its own like positives and negative boon effects that you'll have to deal with while you play through. I'm just gonna put right there, doesn't matter. Sometimes there's like little things on the map uh, like towers or old colonies or things like that that'll modify our run even further. But let's just get started. At the beginning of the game, when you pick a location you want to colonize, you get to pick between a group of workers and a pack of resources. We want to see the fox gameplay since that's what's new. So we'll go ahead and take a look at what resources they have down here. There's berries, shrooms, they've got some bricks, they've got some wildfire essence on in there. They get two extra guys right at the beginning. I'll probably take the two extra guys right at the beginning. Let's go ahead and do that. And then over here on the right-hand side, as you unlock metagame bonuses, you will also get embarkation points. Embarkation points, they allow you to draft more stuff Dwarf Fortress style before you start out your colony. So that could be anything from free building blueprints to free actual resources that just tick up in perpetuity for the rest of your run. Uh, they are very expensive, but if you have a strategy in mind for how you want to get the whole thing done, you can play on those. Uh, you could just get something simple like food or building materials if you wanted to do so. I'm going to take some stone because I've noticed sometimes I don't get stone nodes. And that can be a big problem if you don't pick up stone nodes anytime soon. I'm going to take some oil because oil can be very useful for resolving uh, certain events and certain problems. I'll probably take 42 meat. That sounds pretty good. 
And then after that, I'll probably take... Well, I was going to take a little bit of cloth, but I can't afford it. So I guess I'll take some eggies. Eggies are fine. The difficulties are down here. As you can see, there are many, many different difficulties. They will increasingly get harder. It tells you what the modifiers are. For right now, we're going to play on Pioneer difficulty just because I'm explaining the game and showing stuff off. But what you will find is we probably won't struggle too much on this playthrough because this is a fully unlocked account. So technically, I'm kind of above this content that we're playing right here uh, due to the fact that I'm on a maxed out account. But there's our little fox buddies right there. You can see them. Uh, the foxes come in different flavors. There's, I think, lady foxes, and there's, like, dude foxes, which are, like, the bigger ones. And then we got two extra people. One of them was a fox, and one of them was a human. In this game, everybody has different jobs that you assign them to, and the real core gameplay loop here is you are trying to accomplish tasks that the queen is sending you. Every time you do a task, it will fill up this blue meter. Over time, this red meter will fill up. You're trying to outrun the red meter. When the red meter fills up all the way to the end, it means the queen is fed up with you and thinks you're a failure, and she basically calls you back to be reprimanded, and the run is over. Aside from that, you also need to be aware of the hostility of the forest. The hostility of the forest makes everybody unhappy, and it goes up based on all the things you see listed underneath. This game is tooltipped very well, so if you're ever confused about what something does or how it functions, all you gotta do is mouse over it. The game is tooltipped in a very professional and very modern way. Up here in the top left, we've got a wheel around each of our social classes and races. If you get it above this little blue line, you make them that happy. Uh, you will fill in consistently your blue meter for each person that's above that blue line. If it's below that blue line, you're good, but if it's actually gone and in the negatives this number turns red, people are gonna start dying or people are gonna start leaving. And every person that dies and leaves fills up the red meter. So let's unpause the game and get going. At the beginning, it's always going to give you some blueprints to play around with. I kind of want to have a look around what we're doing here. Uh, we've got fertile soil over there. It looks like we've got some... We've got a geyser over there. Okay. These are glades. We need to kind of cut our way towards them and uncover them because inside of them, there will be events. There will be collectibles. There will be relics. There will be pickups. If a glade has a skull on it, it means that it's a dangerous glade. Uh, this game does not have combat, but what it means by a dangerous glade is you might open this up, and there might be a big golden temple inside of there that has now been defiled and exposed to the outside world. And if you don't resolve whatever its event is in like 10 minutes by sacrificing resources or sacrificing people or whatever the relic wants you to do, something really bad will happen, so never mind what you have to sacrifice. It's usually bad, but the thing that happens if you don't sacrifice is usually like game-changing or like game-losing. It can be quite bad. The first thing we want to do is we want to get a... Let's get the let's get the wooder jacks all nice and set up. And so anybody that doesn't have a job assigned will automatically default to being a builder. And you'll see that our foxes, when not gathering around the fire, they will pick up the little resources and bring them over to this side. We've also got mushrooms down here, which introduces us to one of our best features in the game. You can click on the UI right there, and it will just hand you the building that you need that is connected with the resource that you just contextually clicked on. Is that not one of the greatest features ever? Like, period. This should be the bog standard for any type of colony survival game. Like, from now on, if a colony survival game does not have that, I, I pledge that I will raise an eyebrow and be like, hmm... Well, against the storm has it, and I'll do it in a very judgmental way. Uh, let's go ahead and assign some people to jobs. We'll put two foxes over here. We will put three foxes over here. And then when that building gets done, we'll probably assign a fox or two to it as well. We need to designate some areas that need to get chopped down. There we go. That'll uncover two glades and give us a little bit of time to play around with. I'll also start clear-cutting in that direction, possibly, although I don't think that'll actively get them there. Now, be forewarned that every single woodcutter that you assign raises the hostility of the forest on you. So the forest is going to get madder and madder the longer you keep chopping it down. The game does come with an array of different time scales that you can play the game on. For right now, since we don't really have anything happening and we're just waiting for wood to pile up, I'm going to go ahead and just speed it up to times three. But now, I'm going to assign two foxes to gather up that flax right there so that we have some fiber in escrow ready to go to keep us nice and regular. Uh, events are going to happen every year. We've got to choose a cornerstone. A cornerstone is kind of like a Binding of Isaac ability that lasts for the duration of this map. Uh, it can be anything from making you chop wood faster 
to cannibalism. It kind of depends, and I can see the RimWorld fans' ears perking up right now. Yes, this game has entire colony builds that revolve entirely around cannibalism and its benefits. You can make a colony where you get food every time someone dies, and then you can just stack up a ton of bonuses that make you get richer and richer and more successful every time someone dies or is sacrificed, and you can basically run your camp just like an absolute dystopia if you want. I haven't done it yet, but I have seen the perks pop up that like very clearly are meant to be put together to make a cannibalism run actually function. Over here, we can specialize in basically metallurgical stuff, so smelting. Uh, we can get a guild catalog. That means that we get an extra cornerstone on traders. We can get a titan belt, so the travel cost on trade routes is reduced. That's not bad. And then we've got reinforced axes, which make wood production 35% faster. That's the easy gimme. If you've got meta progression unlocked, you do get rerolls for most of the decisions that you make. And if you ever wanted a big list of all the things acting on the map right now with your abilities and the map's abilities, they're listed down here on the bottom left. You can also see them up here at the top and it'll give you all their qualifiers for when they activate. This game is divided up into a number of seasons, basically drizzle, storm, and clearing. A storm, everybody's mood is going to drop very sharply. Drizzle, everybody's kind of neutral, and during clearing, everybody's mood goes up. So those are other things to keep in mind. A uh, good next thing for us to do is supply housing to all of these individuals to keep them happy. We do have fox houses, but we're going to need to come up with... There's kind of like a magical ore. It's called like... I forget what it's called. It's got a name like dewdrop ore or something like that. Their houses require dewdrop ore, which makes the foxes actually a little bit harder to provide for than everybody else. For right now, I need four houses because each house holds three people. So we should be alright if my math is correct. I think I passed basic kindergarten math. So I should be alright. Let's wait it on out and see what happens here. We also actually, we have our first set of demands from the queen. Uh, everything in this game has a wonderful, magnificent UI. Honestly, everything about this game feels old school, I almost said Blizzard inspired. Old school Blizzard inspired. Pre-Activision Blizzard inspired because nothing Blizzard has done since Activision has been good. Uh, but everything pre that, Awesome stuff. Great things. The Blizzard North Day, fantastic. Uh, this game seems to very much have respect for those earlier Blizzard titles with the way they have their UIs designed and how everything is tooltipped and the general graphics of the characters that walk around. Our first order from the Queen is to deliver 35 wood or to uncover a Glade event and resolve it. This one will give us two people and three parts. This one will give us 30 food, three parts, and four newcomers. The wood is easy. It's an easy win, but we don't get as much out of it, so I'm going to go with the Glade event. Second one, uh, they want me to have a stonecutter's camp and a harvester's camp. Once we have those two things, we will get 15 clay, 15 reeds, and three parts. The other option is we can get uh, three packs of crops, and with those three packs of crops, we will get two perks that permanently make us better and 10 bucks. I think that's doable, and I think I'm going to go for it. Over here on this side with our final order, they want us to uncover four glades, and that will actually give us one of my favorite perks in the game. It allows your characters to carry a lot more items on them when they're in transit, doing just general logistical work. And so this right here increases the efficiency of our colony by quite a lot. However, the other option that we have here is that we have tools that come out from over on this side, and tools can be useful for a number of different things on the map and, like, a number of different events. I am going to risk it and not take the tool delivery, even though, as someone who has, like, 20 hours or so in this game in preparation for this video, I have learned to stack up 20 to 30 tools early on. I'm breaking one of my fundamental rules right now just to make this more interesting because we've kind of, like, out-leveled this content. And so we will, we will see what happens. Now the foxes, what do they do? What are they good at? Uh, every character in this game has different abilities when they're assigned to different stuff. So humans enjoy farming, and they're really good at it. If you assign them to tend the flame over here, uh, they lower the queen's ire because apparently the queen is human, and so they know how to assuage her anger. The foxes, uh, they are really good working with rainwater, and we'll get into the rainwater systems once we get into advanced manufacturing and production chains. And they are good at any task that requires you to be scouting. So there you go. 
All of our goals are going to be listed over here on the right. We've opened up one glade. I'm actually going to keep them focused on opening up this glade over here and widening the mouth a bit so that I can effectively use it as a resource. But we still have two people that are not housed. There we go. The house is almost built. I was trying to make sure that the house was done. Uh, the houses, they don't seem to randomize or anything else like that. That is a little feature that I would like to see uh, for houses that are basically, you know, built contiguously next to each other. It'd be nice to see these little awnings move around or have like a chimney that moves around, a window that moves around, a door that kind of slightly is off kilter or off to the side or side goggling or something like that. Uh, be a good idea, in my opinion, just to break apart the monotony of similar buildings placed next to each other. It's not a major issue but it's just one of those tiny things I love to see in games like this. Inside this area, we have a resource cache. The resource cache will count as a glade event. The resource cache is full of copper and mushrooms. Or we can use stone, and we can send it back to the capital to get $10 and a little bit of Queen's Grace, which will fill up our blue meter. I'm going to let it sit there for a minute because I don't know exactly what I want to do with it. We're kind of out of people right now to do any activities with. We've got everybody assigned to jobs already, so we're going to want to wait it out until we get our first batch of immigrants very shortly, which should be pretty soon, I think. We should get immigrants pretty soon. Our second glade is open, and our second glade has indeed given us access to an area that will allow us to farm. Now, we don't really have enough humans to support that farming at maximum efficiency just yet, so we will want to pick up some humans at some point, just to make that a little bit simpler. But it's probably not the worst idea right now either to start setting up a bit of a road network, because roads do supply your people with a little bit of extra foot speed. And while these little dirt paths don't matter that much, they do give us 5%, and 5% across tiles back to back to back will add up. Looks like they're chopping down some trees over there. Good. Every single building in this game is modular and can be moved around to suit your interests. So I could, for example, take this woodcutter's camp and move it right over to here. And then I could just give them a new assignment to chop down all those trees right there. And maybe chop down all those trees right there once they get done. But I'm going to wait because I don't want them to split their efforts. I'm trying to get these four glades knocked out so that I can lower the queen's ire so that we don't get too far behind the eight ball in the early game, which has a tendency to happen from time to time. I don't know. When I play this game, I find that my ire always gets super high, and then I tend to, like, detonate all my bonuses simultaneously, and so it goes back down to, like, a third, and this fills up almost all the way, and then I win. I don't know. That's I feel like that's the blueprint for how my games tend to go when I play against the storm. Now, the soundtrack in this game is quite good. It's very atmospheric. They've got, I think, the sound effects and the audio mixed very well into that as well. Uh, they've picked a lot of sounds in the overall soundscape of the game that sort of imply that feeling that you get on like a very rainy, very windy, very crappy day where you have to stay inside and kind of drink your hot cocoa. It's almost a cozy game, in all honesty, because there is no real antagonism to this game. Like, you don't get invaded by orcs and have to fight them off or anything else like that. No, it's a game about building repeated societies that continue to get stronger out on the hinterland periphery of an empire in a post-apocalyptic world, and it kind of sticks to its wheelbase there and ends up being kind of cozy, I guess, in my opinion. Good game to play on a rainy day. We get our first batch of immigrants. We can get another fox, and we can get two humans and seven boards. There's reasons in this game to have homogenous societies, and there are reasons not to have homogenous societies. Every group of people in this game has things that they want and they need inside these panels here. And so having a homogenous society, it's much easier to build a industry and a production chain that satisfies everybody because the blueprint is much simpler. However, if you have a society that is not homogenous, you have a lot more skill sets to draw from when it comes to your production and whatnot. And so it really kind of depends if you want to optimize towards making everybody happy or if you want to optimize towards producing as many goods as possible. That's really going to be your call when it comes to homogenous versus heterogeneous societies. Uh, we've got... I'm going to take the three beavers because beavers are basically uh, dwarves in this game. They're good at anything that has to do with exploitation, uh, they're good at anything that has to do with manufacturing, from what I recall. Yeah, they are gifted woodworkers, and they enjoy anything that's tagged with engineering. And you can kind of see the tags right here inside each building, so you can figure out 
who's good at what. Uh, they have now chopped down both of those glades, which means we're done with our exploration. Good. So as you can see, the red meter has gone down, blue meter has gone up. Every time we hit one of these little uh, hash marks, or whatever you want to call them, one of these little meniscuses, uh, you get to draft a new building. I don't draft my buildings at the beginning of the game, because I don't know what I'm going to need at the beginning of the game, because I haven't opened up any glades, and so I haven't really gotten any ideas or any inklings as to what type of industry I want to run yet. Over here, we have a large storm bird. Oh, no, a small storm bird nest. We've got some clay deposits. Uh, we've got some sea marrow over here, which is basically uh, it's oil. That's all you need to know, and oil is very useful in this game. Unfortunately, I actually kind of have refined oils already, don't I? Yeah. So we've got crude oil and refined oil. Okay, well, the next thing I want to put up is we'll put up a stonecutter's camp because we've got multiple things that can be exploited by the stonecutter's camp. So we'll put it over here on the sea marrow first because the sea marrow tends to be really useful for resolving random events on the map. It tends to be a constituent part of, of fixing problems. And so having an open line to it and like a nice little stack of it feels okay to me. This is not an exploitation camp, so it doesn't really matter we put in here I'll put two foxes on it since I have a lot of foxes and not a lot of everything else they're going all the way up there to harvest that flax but we should have a really nice supply of flax by the time we get done with this I'm gonna move that up to there and then we'll just have that only road run all the way up to that side very nice and they're continuing to chop down trees we are going to want to focus on getting this glade open right here, as well as continuing to stack up as much wood as we can possibly get. Because when things start to go wrong, uh, you can fix everybody's mood and you can fix the anger of the forest by going in here. And you can choose a resource to sacrifice at a much more ridiculous rate in order to make the forest less angry at you. You're basically making sacrifices to the spirit of the forest right here on that ceremonial flame. We have an herbalist camp on this side. We could technically move it on over to here to go get those mushy mushes. Now that the mushrooms are all good to go, that'll supply us with food. All of your resources can be found on these five categorical tabs at the top. You just click on them and they'll unfold. I'm trying to get people ready to play this game by the time they finish off my video. I don't know how many people have not played this yet because it seems to be quite successful on Steam. But somebody has to have not played it. Maybe the way that I talk about the game or I show you how to play, it might help out and cause them to lose less colonies in the beginning, unlike me. We'll drop a house in right there. I'll probably actually squoosh that house in right there, just to make it look a little bit nicer over on this side. And as soon as we get done with this little clearing, we'll move them over to here, and we'll knock out that little strip, which this little triangle right here should give us access to three more glades. This is kind of a weird map because all of our dangerous glades are pretty far out. So it's going to take us some time to get there. Let's think about, do we have any big resources yet? So there are things that I think I might want. A lumber mill is one of them. So a lumber mill is an easy pick. So I think I'll take that. We could also take the carpenter, and that would give us the same output as the, the lumber mill, just with worse efficiency. But it would give us access to making our own tools, which means that if we find copper smelting around... We could manufacture our own tools, which is definitely a thing that we're lacking right now. I think I'll probably go for the lumber mill, though, just for the maximum efficiency production. We did, of course, get the furnace on the next pull, uh, just, to, just to make life complicated. I'll take the furnace, sure. After the furnace... I think I'll take the Alchemist's Hut for the Crystallized Dew, because we need that to make fox houses. And after that, I'll take the Workshop, because... Well, actually, did we get a Weavery or anything? We did not get a Weavery, so we still need a way to produce fabric. Otherwise, we're going to be softlocked. So I'm going to go ahead and take fabric as my next production. And we don't have that many free workers left. We only have four free workers left, but I do think it's probably a good idea to make a crude workstation. The crude workstation is the first building you're going to be able to produce that allows you to make advanced thingies. Uh, things like planks, cloth, bricks, uh, stuff that requires something else to feed in in order to get there. And so 
we want to get one of these up and running, and chances are we probably want to put our beavers to work on this. I'll have them produce everything for now, but once we've got a nice little stockpile, you'll notice that every building, they seem to be making similar things. That's true, they do. A lot of buildings make overlapping products in this game. However, every building does it with a differing level of efficiency, so if it's red, it means they do it really badly. That means they produce slowly, and it takes a lot of inputs to get the same amount of outputs. If they had a star here, or two stars, or three stars, it means it produces very quickly, and it takes a lot less input to get what you want out. And so over time, we're going to want to phase this guy out for more advanced options. We have another batch of demands from the queen. This one, they want me to sacrifice some coal and some wood. And I'll get 20 copper bars. I'll get secret techniques of the fire keepers, uh, which means that our fuel lasts longer in the sacrificial hearth. And then we'll get more resin production. Or we can keep our humans happy for 24 resolve. And that'll unlock a brick oven. But we kind of already picked up a brick producer. Oh, no, that doesn't produce bricks. Apparently it makes pies. I'm going to go with this guy right here because I feel like this is an easier pull. This guy over here, we've got have a brewery and produce 35 ale. Over here, they want me to install rain engines inside three buildings. Rain engines are a new mechanic that I hadn't seen until I started prepping uh, for this video. I was unaware of the rain engines, but basically if you have geysers or you have rain catches, you can catch the rain. It comes in three different colors, and then you can use different colored rain to power different buildings to make them more efficient or to make them produce larger yields or to make the workers happier that work inside of there. It's up to you what you want to do with it, but the rain is basically a multifaceted tool that you can throw at a lot of different problems. Let's ride out this storm real quick. There's a berry bush over there, too. A dewberry bush. In my mind, it, calling somebody a dewberry was always like an insult. You're calling them like a dummy. <laughs> you dewberry. But anyways, I don't know. That's what I always thought in my head. They're almost done picking stuff up over here. And we'll want to keep an eye on that so that we can bulldoze this building and get our space back. We have another geyser down here. We also have some broccoli. Okay, and then we've also got a bit more oil down there, which is good. We've got immigrants coming on in. We can get two more foxes. We can get a human and a beaver, or we can get three beavers and a fox. I'm going to get the three beavers and a fox, I think. I mean, they bring in fabric with them, which is pretty nice. But we'll go three beavers and a fox for our workforce. And then we'll swap these guys into beavers. Because the beavers are better. Obvi they're beavers, dude. Obviously, they're better at chopping down trees. Like, it would be a, a tremendous missed opportunity for any bit video game to include beavers in the overall racial hierarchy and not have them be really good at chopping down trees. Harvester's Camp has no harvesting nearby. Is there anything they can harvest left? There is not. So we're going to have this building go dormant. And then we'll move it around once we've actually got something we can exploit with. They can break open this cache. Food is looking pretty solid. How much copper do I have? No copper. I think I'm going to break it open for the copper. So we'll assign a couple people to run on over here and break that open for the copper. Because I think I am going to have to start producing my own tools at some point. It doesn't seem like they're going to be giving them to me. We also need to find a coal mine before too long. Either that or a charcoal kiln. Do I have a charcoal kiln? I don't know if I picked up the kiln or not. I tend to forget what I was working on in this game. Now, we have a furnace, so that's pretty cool. It'll produce copper bars, bricks, and pie, strangely enough. Alchemist Hut will give us the crystallized dew that we need. Crystallized dew requires shrimp, resin, and stone, and it looks like it also needs a rain catch for storm water to work properly. So what we're going to have to do there is, do I have the rain catch? I do have geyser pumps, and I do have rain catches. Good to know. We've got a new cornerstone as well that we can pick up. I think we'll probably go... I don't like any of these, so I'm going to re-roll them. None of those are helpful to what we're doing right now. This one right here gives us resolve and fills up their meters whenever we do a trade route. That feels solid to me. 
And in fact, that reminds me, a trading post. Nobody has to man this, and we just get free caravans that come through that we can trade with, and we can get rid of some of the things we have in excess of uh, throughout our little adventures. So it might not be a bad idea to get a trade post up and running early. It's something that I always tell myself I'm going to do, and then I always forget to do. Gain a villager whenever you get a glade. You get three oil for every flower. Every five trade routes, you get ten bucks. An artifact infused with the power of the Holy Flame. Hostility from your woodcutters is decreased. Let's do that because we're almost at level one, and I want to keep that down about as far as possible. Our first trader is here. What do we want to do with this first trader? Well, we probably want to sell him some sea marrow because we have hundreds of it, so we'll probably give him like 40 sea marrow maybe. Yeah, that'll be all right. We don't need more than that. We've got a lot of fibers, but I don't want to let those go just yet. What can I trade into from here? Tools. That's exactly what I wanted to trade into. Let me let me let me see what I can do. Honestly, might be worth it since we have another exploitable pool here to sell all of that. Cuz we're going to get more anyways. So, 15 tools solves problems right this second. So we'll go ahead and knock that out. We've completed a glade clearing event, which swaps that over. And on our next batch of things to get done, they're still over there getting mushies. These guys need to be moved over to here so that they can mine that marrow. And then we probably want to get a rain catch up and going. So let's do the rain catch. Put that in right there. We'll assign some foxes to work at it. We do have a lot of homeless people at the moment, too. So I should probably get on top of that. It looks like we need three more houses. We'll run a road back down this way. Just to keep things nice and clear. We'll try to run a road right there, too. Just to make them, because they do have to ferry stuff from these individual production points back to a centralized location. So having the little roads to increase their speed a tiny bit probably won't be the worst plan. I have 90 stone, which means technically I could upgrade these to paved roads and give them a 15% increase. Might be nice. We also have some more Queenie demands. So she wants us to have 16 farm fields and to produce packs of crops. Open two caches, but we have to open two caches... In 10 minutes. Do I have two caches to open right now in that 10 minutes? I do not. So we, we would be reliant on another cache being available inside of one of those areas. If I had two caches on board right now, I'd just go ahead and do it. But I feel like it's risky. Let's go ahead and put some foxes working at the rain catch. And what you'll see is these three meters will increase. Then we can make our stardew condenser or whatever it is, which means we can start stamping out fox houses, uh, which will raise their happiness by quite a lot. And then we can start working on the people that we have less of. So probably beavers second and humans third, I think. Over here, we can send that back or we can get a chest of ancient tablets. That's not a very good yield from that little event right there. That's kind of a bummer. Uh, no, I won't unpause. It's forcing me to choose something right here. I will probably say... Let's call it eight trade routes. I think eight trade routes is doable. And then over here, that wants me to have ten humans and eight raincoats. Or we can get... 16 decorations in five minutes. And that will give us better beer production. It'll give us six wildfire essence, which is what you use to build more sacrificial fires. Okay. Or right, we can get more beers over here and scrolls. All of these are kind of rough, but the decorations are probably doable right now. So I needed eight blue decorations. And then I needed... Are those harmony? Those are a little bit more expensive, but we have the stuff on hand, I think, to do most of them. So I need two big gardens, and I would actually prefer for these gardens not to be inside of our building space. I don't want them to use up the orange area, if I can help it. Actually, I think they might have to be inside the orange area. Never played around with it, but I would assume they need to be inside the orange area. 
it would be odd if they didn't. Let's go ahead and stamp out two of those real quick. And that'll give us half of our decorations taken care of. And then we needed eight for harmony. And I can decorate a little bit. So that'll give us four of them. We have our eight aesthetics. And like, what other little... I can make a lizard post? I don't even have any lizards here. I guess I'll just stick with flames. I mean, because fire is fun, right? We'll just kind of like line the road right there. It's not going to look great aesthetically. But I'm just trying to mash out this queen order before bad things happen. We also have another building we can draft. Uh, we can produce clo uh, coats. That's really good because pretty much everybody's going to want coats. We could also upgrade our rain collector. I'll probably just go with coats. Because coats should be pretty much an easy win for both the beavers and the humans. The foxes apparently don't like it, but that's okay. How many workers do I have left? A lot. Let's put people to work. Let's expand our industry. So we need a alchemist's hut. That's going to be more or less required. We kind of need to have that. I'll go ahead and put it right here. And inside the alchemist's hut, I'm not really too worried about tea. Not too worried about wine either. I actually just kind of want the... I kind of just want the crystallized dew so that I can start upgrading housing. Oh, our timed order is done too as well. That's finished off. So we'll bang that out real quick, and that's brought us another building draft. We haven't really had any big nodes, so I haven't really had to get the advanced nodes yet. I don't have anything that can produce a pack of crops yet, and I need something that produces a pack of crops. I'm going to take the greenhouse because it looks like we're setting up to exploit water so it feels like a strong play to me we will put the greenhouse so the whole thing we're basically like wasting the rest of that area gotcha okay not upset about it we also have some more flax down here that we can get our hands on So we'll put you right there, and I do have workers that can get back in here. We'll call... Actually, no, 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 no. We want the humans to be in the greenhouse. That's what it is. Uh, aside from that, how are we looking on boards and advanced processed goods? Not amazing. But we do have our water beginning. I'm going to enable all the water types for the dew production. And as you can see, they're going to start using the dew that's inside these little reservoirs uh, in order to manufacture these bricks over here. I'm also okay with you using resin, actually, and I'm not okay with you using herbs. We're going to need the herbs for other stuff. You can change the inputs and outputs on pretty much every single recipe in this game just by fiddling with these little menus over here. Uh, it's a tremendously customizable game, and I think that's part of what makes the game so entertaining to play is that there's a lot of workarounds. This game doesn't have, like, hard, finite, decided production chains. Everything in this game has, like, a little tiny bit of wiggle room to play around with uh, to kind of make your society in your image. Let's go... Oh, boy. So all farms can plant mushrooms on farm fields during drizzle season. If you leave rainwater for a while, it releases a pleasant vapor that increases food production for every 50 units of drizzle water stored. That'll probably be nice to have, given the fact that we are running purely off water right now. What type of water does this use? I have questions in that regard. I guess foxes can work here, too. So it could be humans or foxes on this one. That's okay. It's going to start producing herbs and start producing mushrooms all year round, which is going to make our... It'll make our, our food supply a lot more resilient, I think. And now we're pretty much just waiting for immigrants until the next pass and season comes by. From there, we're going to want to pick up a building that allows us to make packs of crops. We'll also want to look into something that allows us to go into trade routes over here, and we can send things back to the capital in exchange for money. 
And so... We should have some things here that will allow us to get stuff done. We don't have the provisions for that guy, so we'll have to get some provisions going for our caravans. We have more immigrants ready to come on in, so we will go ahead and take them. More foxes is fine. They are welcome to join us inside our great foxy society. I am going to have to get a lumber mill up and running now because we're not producing enough boards. So let's go ahead and get him rocking. And then it probably wouldn't be the worst idea to also get a workshop up and running, in all honesty. I feel like both of those are pretty strong economic plays, since the workshop is just a better version of this workstation right here, which means the second that it's done, we can bulldoze this guy and we'll get a lot more effective at producing uh, second-tier goods, basically. So this guy right here, we're going to go ahead and bulldoze him. There we go. And now we've got the better building. We'll throw a couple of beavers in there. And you guys are welcome to start mashing out everything you can get your hands on. I will not stop you. So if you can start, as you can see, the efficiency of this is much better. It only takes five logs to create two planks. And it should go, this little production should be faster. Should be all right. Uh, trader is here. Old fart fluff. Oh, farloof. Okay. What would you like to buy, old farloof? What do I need right now? I think that boards and shoring up some of our T1 goodies or our T2 goodies is a strong idea. So we'll pick up like 10 bricks. We'll pick up 10 of each. There we go. And from those 10, we can sell him some of these bad boys over here. There we go. All ready to rock. We'll go ahead and trade that on off. And if we had a little bit of extra money, we could buy some things down here. But I don't really see the point right now. I think we're probably good to go. Let's not get too crazy with the dispensation of things that might be useful to us one day. Uh, we can disable planks over there because we have a lumber mill down here that's going to be making those same planks. But for three instead, we're not going to make scrolls right now until we absolutely need to. And then if we wanted to use some of our oils, we can make packs of trade goods. Uh, we don't have any packs of trade goods ready to go over there, though, so I think we're going to hold off on that. And then we needed to produce provisions. Might not be a bad idea to get some pumps going, too. Yeah, let's get some pumps going for at least blue and green flavor water. That'll help out a bit. How are we doing on that production? of Are you guys producing over here? I don't see anything inside of storage. I'm beginning to worry. There it is, 22 of them. Good. Let's start building some fox houses, shall we? Uh, with the fox houses, oh, we don't have enough boards. Okay, we got to wait for the lumber mill to spin into dope production. We're also going to use pipes to connect this guy right here uh, to water usage. We're going to put a fox in there, a fox in there. A fox in there and a fox in there. And we should have a really good supply of green water and blue water now, I think. Should be anyways. And now that we've got this hooked up to a water supply, what we can do is we can we can basically set an intended level of where we want this to function at. Now, 50% production speed is good enough for me, but you can push it up pretty high if you really want to. But it's your call on how you want to run that. If you notice that you're constantly running out of water and things, it may be time to adjust stuff, but what do we have here? We've got another couple Queenie wants. Uh, she wants me to have 10 humans and give them all raincoats. I can probably do that, but we're kind of far off on 10 humans, which kind of worries me. This one is fulfill their leisure need for 120 seconds. That means we're going to have to get into some kind of beer production here, but I don't really have a farmscape for it, so I think we gamble on the humans. You don't really have to do all these in order to be successful. 30 roads is doable right now. I'll do that right this second. That's an easy pick. Let's go ahead and we'll run a road back over to here. We'll run a road down to there. And that should probably be about 30 roads, I think. 
they finish that off down there. Oh, and look at that. We've got the, uh, the two things that we can now go through. I need to get somebody that can produce a pack of crops, too. That's going to be my my next terrifying thing that I need to get underway. So the bad news is I don't really have a whole lot to play with when it comes down to making provisions to get this eight trade routes done. Luckily, we're still pretty early on, and the queen's not that pissed at us, so, like, we should be fine. Shouldn't be that big of a deal, but... We do need to start smushing out some provisions. Do we not have stone or something? 74 stone right there. I think we just don't have enough workers right now. Nobody's really mashing out houses. Let's go ahead and we'll add in a couple of fox houses here. Uh, nice detail about this game. Every single race has their own house with its own appearance. For foxes, we need seven of these. So that's a pretty big build order. What I'll probably do is get rid of some of these decorations just to make space and make my life a little bit easier because we don't lose credit for the quest because we did that. And then we'll probably smush out a couple more fox houses over here. There we go. And it appears as though we're looking pretty good. Wow, you're already up to 54 of those bad boys? Jesus, slow down, gentlemen. Good lord. That's a lot of boards. Okay. Other things that we can grab. Uh, these guys need to be wood chopping elsewhere. I did want to show you a dangerous event before we go so that you can see what that kind of looks like. Like, I know we're getting kind of long in the tooth right now for this video, but let's see. Every newcomer group has two more villagers. Tough one. Uh, you get one ancient tablet for every two completed... Events. That's actually not bad. The tablets are pretty valuable if you sell them to traders, and so that feels all right to me. It doesn't feel too far off. And we've got a lot of events that are still kind of unresolved. With this herbalist camp, the only thing they can really grab is these berries over here, I think. Yeah, I think the berries are the best that they can do. As far as the stone cutters go, are you guys done here? Oh, they're not done. Good. That geyser pump is full. Fantastic. That's what I like to see. We still need a few more paved roads. So we'll go ahead and pave it on up down that way. And the city does look a lot nicer with paved roads, doesn't it? It's a good looking city. Everything in this game is so magnificently well done. This is... If you had told me that you could mix colony survival with roguelite... The only other game, I think, that's kind of done that is Kanga. But Kanga has a lot of conflict and a lot of fighting and a very real RTS influence to it. And this is one of the few games that I think has pulled it off kind of peacefully, I suppose. Our food supply is getting rough. We're going to have to get on top of that. Our population's growing a little bit too rapidly right now. Uh, Stonecutter's Camp is done, so we can officially move them down to here which is like a money spot. And then from there, they're still gathering up the remainder of those. We do have a forager's camp that we can play around with over on this side. And I think we should, because we're going to need a little bit more food coming on in. I have noticed the number is slowly creeping downwards over there. It does not appear to be stable. And I would like for it to be stable. And as you can see, our little fox houses are getting put up. That should clear out houses for everybody else. And then we'll make more specialized housing as time goes along. Is that enough for all my foxes? My 17 foxes? So I need 8 of these. 5, 6, I need one more. There we go. That'll be like our fox quarter over there. Uh, we have our first dangerous glade. What does it have? It has a rain spirit totem. The rain spirit totem can be burned. That will give us incense, and that will give us ancient tablets. Or we can purify it using some of our oil, and that will give us a converted rain totem that permanently reduces the hostility of the wood by 50 but we'll get plus 150 while we're working on this. So I think I'm going to use the... 
I think I'm going to use the oil and we'll go ahead and consecrate it. The long-term benefit feels worth it to me. There's our 30 roads right there, which will keep the queen off of our back and get us a new building. Hopefully, well, I was hoping we would get a building that would produce the provisions we need to do our trade routes. Let's try again. We still did not get what I wanted. This is becoming hurtful. It's okay, I'll take the plantation. Plantation's fine, because that'll allow me to put some farm crops in right here and get a plantation going uh, that will produce food from that side. So I feel like that's a, a strong opener right there. Let's go ahead and run a road over to there, and we will run a road kind of over to here. There we go. And then we will call that a day. We've also got an abandoned building on this side. I don't really want to reclaim it. I think I'd rather just loot all the goodies out of it. What does that have? That has 25 raincoats. Not bad. Not bad. 25 raincoats fixes a problem. Somebody go get them raincoats for me. That solves half of one of my challenges, and then all I have to do is get some more humans, and we'll be ready to rock. But yeah, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we were playing around with a title called Against the Storm, which has a new faction joining it in the coming week. So if you have this game on your backlog and haven't been playing it because you did all the content, you got new content coming. Content that is full of foxy things. I will see you all later. Thank you for stopping on in. I'll be back tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet, but up until then, it's time for me to go. Bye, folks.